determine whether there is probable cause for the arrest itself. That means whether there are reasonable grounds to believe that a crime may have been committed and that you may have been the person who committed the crime. There are certain things that we have to accomplish today. The first is to make sure you understand the reason or reasons for your arrest. The second is to make sure you receive a copy of the charging document. In your case, it will be an arrest report so that you and or your attorneys can prepare for a trial of your case. The third is to make sure you clearly understand all of the rights that you are guaranteed as a citizen of this United States. First of all, you have the absolute right to have your case tried by a jury of your peers. Six individuals will be chosen to decide whether you're guilty or not guilty of the offense or offenses as alleged. Second, you have the right, if you do not agree with the decision of the jury, which is called a verdict, to appeal that decision to a higher court for perhaps a better or more favorable result or outcome. Third, you have the right to be represented by an attorney at all stages of the proceedings, including throughout your trial and on all of your appeals. You have the right to hire an attorney of your choice. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for you by the state of Florida. Fourth, you have the right to remain silent, which means that your trial, if you choose to say absolutely nothing, it cannot be held against you by any jury or by any court. Fifth, you have the absolute right to confront your accusers, which means you or your attorney will have the right to cross-examine the state's witnesses and try and impeach their evidence so that they cannot prove the case against you, and you have the right to bring in your own evidence and your own witnesses, and if your witnesses will not come voluntarily, the judge assigned to your case can force them to come through the subpoena power of the court. You also have the right to reasonable communication with your family, friends, and attorney, and if you ask to do so, or have the means to do so, reasonable means will be provided for you. Finally, you have the right to be presumed innocent, which means you cannot be found guilty of any charge or any crime unless and until the state of Florida can prove beyond and to the exclusion of every reasonable doubt each element of that charge against you. Do you have a question about any of these rights, Mr. Zimmerman? No, Your Honor. Do you understand all those rights? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, good. The next thing we have to accomplish is to make sure you understand when your next court proceeding is going to be. You are responsible for any information you are given here in writing today or told here today, especially as it involves dates, times, and places. If you do not appear for your next scheduled court appearance, I can almost guarantee that the judge assigned to your case will issue a warrant for your arrest and you're going to wind up back where you started today. The final thing we have to do today is to discuss bond and reasonable conditions of bond based upon the offenses as alleged. And so, Mr. Zimmerman, do you understand that the reason for your arrest is that it has been alleged that there was a domestic violence-related aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and a domestic violence-related battery and criminal mischief? Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Did you receive a copy of the arrest report, sir? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I did as well. I do find probable cause for all three allegations and for the arrest. I'm going to appoint the Public Defender's Office to represent you on all three of these criminal charges, Mr. Zimmerman. Your next court appearance will be an arraignment with Judge Rex Seidler on January 7, 2014 at 1.30 p.m. in courtroom 1A. Now we'll discuss bond and reasonable conditions of bond. I will hear from the state first. Ms. Adaraju? Uh, Your Honor, it's Ethan Munoz for the state of Florida. Okay. Okay, well, Your Honor, we had the opportunity to speak with the victim in this case. She is in fear for her safety, and she would like that there be no contact and no return. We do have two exclusionary zones to include 1308 Top Field Court, Apodka, that's T-O-P-F-I-E-L-D, and also an additional right. address of 1010 Sand Lake Road in Altamont Springs, Florida. In addition, Your Honor, we're requesting no possession of firearms or ammunition, and that any new address that he is to uh, live at also be weapon-free. We're also requesting that he not be allowed to travel outside the state of Florida, and also to uh, relinquish his passports. Okay. I do Mr. Want, Your Honor, I, oh, I'd go like, ahead. if I could just put some other um, things on the record. The victim had indicated sure. that there was a prior domestic violence incident that occurred approximately a week and a half ago that involved um, a, a choking that she did not report to the police. 
She is in fear for her safety on the day of this incident. She had indicated that they had been discussing breaking up. He's also uh, has mentioned suicide in the recent past due to those factors and uh, the defendant indicating at the time he was uh, threatening to commit suicide that he had nothing to lose. We feel that the victim safety and the community safety is of paramount concern. And at this time, Your Honor, the state is requesting $50,000 bond to ensure his return to court. Okay, well, I'm not going to go anywhere near that, but uh, Mr. Dowdy, would you yes, like sir. to make some argument on behalf of your client? Yes, sir. On, on behalf of our office, Mr. McGarrell would like to address the court as to that issue, Judge. Good afternoon, Judge. Daniel McGarrell on behalf of Mr. Zimmerman. Uh, regarding the issue of bond, uh, our client does have an opposition to some of the other conditions mentioned of the no return to the address, no weapons, um, and not have any contact with this particular person. Judge, pursuant to the bond schedule of Seminole County, Mr. Zimmerman uh, should be set at bond at $4,900. He is a longtime Central Florida resident. He does not have any failure to appears. He does not have any prior criminal convictions. And he does have significant ties to the community. He, uh, Mr. Zimmerman would have some locations in the Central Florida area where he would, he would be able to stay at that does not involve having any contact with that particular person. So our client is asking for a $4,900 bond in this matter. All right. Mr. Zimmerman, do you still have any personal possessions? Because I read the arrest report. It seemed like you were getting ready to move out of the Topfield Court address in Apopka. Do you still have any possessions there? Yes, sir. Okay, then here's what we're going to do. I'm going to set the bond in this case at $9,000, which is $8,900 on the aggravated assault and $50 for each of the um, misdemeanors for a total of $9,000 with a numerous special conditions. The first is that you cannot return to 130. any personal possessions you may need or want, but you will have to have law enforcement accompany you there. Yes, sir. Second, you cannot go to 1010 Sand Lake. Samantha Scheib, S-C-H-E-I-B-E. -E. And in case you weren't aware, Mr. Zerman, no contact means not in person, not by phone, not by mail, not by fax, blog, tweet, through Facebook, no contact at all. Next, no possession of any weapons or ammunition while you're out on bond, and that's in part for her safety and in part for your own safety, it may seem like. And um, I am going to order the impact monitoring device to keep you away from her and away from those particular locations just to make sure there aren't any further altercations in between the two of you. Um, as far as the passport, did you ever get your passport back after the... Pat, last trial? I'm not, I'm not sure, Your Honor. My former attorney may have it. Uh, okay. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about your passport, but I will put on as a condition no traveling outside of the state of Florida while you're out on bond. And, and uh, those are the special conditions that I believe to be reasonable, and I think that's a reasonable amount based upon the additional allegation of a previous unreported potentially battery by strangulation. That's the reason for the increase in the bond amount. Um, I'm not increasing your bond because if anything has happened in the past, because as far as I'm concerned, this is a brand new case. Yes, sir. So, Thank you, Judge. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go with the increased bond, those special conditions, and Judge Rex Seeler will see you back on January 7th, 2014. We did take your case first in order to accommodate the, the folks in the press who I want to be able to get out of there in a timely fashion. Ms. Uh, Madam State Attorney, anything else you'd like to add? Uh, yes, Your Honor. We were requesting that if you can modify the one return with law enforcement and if you could indicate that a, a third party actually go to the residence to retrieve the belongings instead of him going to the actual residence uh, with law yeah. enforcement, I believe that, that that would yeah. ensure more you safety for the victim. Yeah. You need to go there, right? Well, that would be wise anyway because I think one of the things that might still be there so is go for it, yeah. a weapon no, or I'm ammunition, sure. and okay. so it's better if it's not in Mr. Zimmerman's possession at all. So. Um, you'll have to have a third party go to the residence with law enforcement in order to get your that personal possessions that may remain there. Ma Ms. State Attorney, anything else you'd like to add? No, thank you, Your Honor. And, and Judge, regarding that condition, uh, Mr. Zimmerman would prefer to go there himself. Obviously, he would be accompanied with several law enforcement officers. Uh, he would not be touching any of the weapons 
or the ammunition. Uh, I'm not sure that there is another person in this area that can accompany him to retrieve some of his personal belongings. So he is asking the court if he would be allowed to go there uh, himself. No, I think it's best if somebody else goes there. I really do. This is a volatile situation potentially. So I'm going to leave that as a reasonable condition of bond. And Judge, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, yes, uh, regarding the impact monitor, as uh, the court took notice that he is indigent, we're asking the court to either reduce or waive the cost of that device. I'll waive the cost. Thank you, Judge. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. And the exclusionary Thank zone, you. Judge, to be clear, was uh, how many feet? 1,500 feet to those two areas. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. It's fine. Thank you, Your Honor. You're very welcome. We'll see you back January 7th, 2014, Mr. Zimmerman. Best of luck to you. Yes, sir. Thank you. And we're going to take a five-minute recess, everybody.